Welcome back to Structures Unchained. From 2025 to 2032, Seoul is running a city-scale relay. Four massive projects, all overlapping, all high stakes. Together, they form one big experiment in how fast a megacity can evolve. The goal? A 30-minute metro region, a re-engineered skyline, a global-scale stadium district, and a 180-meter ring in the sky that looks more like science fiction than civil engineering. The vision is set. Now it's time to see what it takes to make it real. Once just a high-speed dream on PowerPoint slides, Seoul's Great Train Express, GTX, is now a live system, expanding north and south, one deep tunnel at a time. The southern section, from Susio to Dongtan, opened in March 2024. Trip times drop to under 20 minutes, faster than most people expected, and enough to shift real estate interest overnight. By June, Gusong Station joined the line. Then, in December, the northern segment, Unjiang to Seoul Station, came online. Two ends, one unstitched middle. That middle is the hard part. Between Seoul Station and Susio lies the deep core of the project. A tunnel slated to open in 2026 will bridge that gap, bringing north and south together. But the real puzzle is Samsung Station, designed as a vast underground interchange linking multiple lines beneath one of the densest places in Korea. It's scheduled for 2028. That timeline is firm for now. When complete, GTXA will stretch 82 kilometers and run trains at up to 180 kilometers per hour, carrying more than 1,000 passengers per set. Peak headways? Just a few minutes apart. By 2026, the tunnel beneath the city should be operational. Two years later, Samsung Station is expected to open, unlocking full end-to-end -end service across the line. Line A will be complete, and lines B and C will be expanding into the 2030s, forming an express backbone for the capital region. This isn't just a new train line, it's a structural reset on how time flows through the city. But faster movement needs stronger anchors, and Gangnam, Hyundai's territory, is trying to become just that. Hyundai's global business center was once supposed to be Seoul's tallest tower. 105 stories, a single statement piece. For years, the project was stuck in limbo, caught between ambition, regulation, and rising construction costs. Now it's finally moving forward, but in a new form. The updated blueprint calls for three 54-story towers, each about 242 meters tall arranged as a campus rather than a monument. They'll rise on the former KEPCO site in Samsungdong, just east of Coex. Instead of a single needle in the sky, Hyundai's going with a vertical trio, a corporate HQ, a luxury hotel, and a cultural-slash-retail anchor, with a public observatory above and transit woven in below. The redesign isn't just about cutting cost. It's about adding flexibility. The new configuration integrates better with the street grid, opens more public access points, and allows construction to phase over time, rather than hinge on one tower finishing all at once. Core construction is underway and will continue through 2026. Phased openings begin in 2027 and will stretch beyond that, depending on how quickly the district fills out. It's not one skyscraper dominating the skyline, it's three towers creating an ecosystem. In a skyline where height used to be the only metric, GBC is opting for something more calibrated, more connected to the flow of the city. Meanwhile, just down the Han River, a different kind of reinvention is underway. One that trades corporate towers for stadium lights and global crowds, Seoul is rebuilding Jamshil from the ground up. Not just as a sports hub, but as a climate-proof, all-season district for conventions, concerts, baseball, and beyond. At the heart is a 30,000-plus seat domed baseball stadium, complete with an integrated hotel, luxury suites, and full-scale AV infrastructure for concerts. The hotel's high floors will offer field-view rooms, like Toronto's Rogers Centre, but adapted for Seoul's entertainment economy. The current stadium comes down after the 2025 season. In 2026, the dome breaks ground. The finish line? A March 2032 opening. 
That's the plan, but baseball isn't leaving the city in the meantime. From 2027 to 2031, the 1988 Olympic Main Stadium will be temporarily converted into a baseball venue. Modular seating will bring capacity up to 30,000 for major games. The conversion costs around 30 to 40 billion won, a temporary fix, but a smart one. Zoom out, and the stadium is just the start. The dome anchors a 350,000 square meter MICE district. Convention center, arena, hotels, riverfront retail, and more. It's being delivered by a private consortium. The price tag has risen from 2.16 trillion won to about 2.5 trillion won as of mid-2025. And if the schedule holds, the dome and the full district arrive together in 2032. Seoul isn't just building a venue, it's building an engine for sports, concerts, exhibitions, and experiences that don't need to check the weather. And while all eyes are on Gangnam and Jamshil, Seoul's most unexpected landmark is quietly rising where nobody asked for it, but everyone's going to notice. Perched atop Hanyul Park, the Seoul Ring is unlike anything else in the skyline. At 180 meters tall, it will be the world's largest spokeless Ferris wheel. Each of its 36 capsules glides along the rim, while the wheel itself stays fixed in place, hubless, gear-like, and quietly surreal. From the top, riders will float more than 270 meters above sea level, taking in views of the Han River, downtown Seoul, and the northern mountains. Augmented reality inside each capsule transforms the experience into a moving, interactive tour. Construction begins in 2025. The opening? 2027. The price tag? About 400 billion won, or roughly 410 million US dollars, for a ring that doesn't spin but will absolutely turn heads. Because Hanul Park sits atop a former landfill, the city is also studying how to move people uphill, gondolas, moving walkways, or something entirely new. The ring is more than a skyline ornament. It's a landmark outside the central business district pulling foot traffic west, toward World Cup Stadium, the Mapo Corridor, and a part of Seoul that rarely gets a global spotlight. Its infrastructure as identity, a public ride, a civic symbol, a question mark in the skyline. The question is, can Seoul finish these projects on time and all together? If so, the city becomes something new, compact, connected, and future ready. And if not, there'll still be a giant ring on a hilltop, watching over the whole thing. If you want more of these urban deep dives, subscribe. We're just getting started.